welcome to our side of the fence. So today we have me and B. Logan's here. And, and our awesome guy, John. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Best introduction I've ever had. <laughs> so John's, we've referenced him many times here so far on the podcast, so we thought it'd be fun to get to sit down with him because I don't even know everything that he has done, all the many lives he's lived. Every time we talk to John, I learn something new about him and his past. Um, and we just thought it'd be fun to take a minute and kind of hear a little bit more about him. Good things, I hope. Not I bad things about the past. No, good things. Fun okay. things. All right. So, right off the bat, I mean, I know B has a ton of questions, but we kind of need to know, like, in chronological order. Uh... Starting after high school? Sure. Okay. Unless something wild happened in high school. No, 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 nothing really major happened in typical thing. Teenage did you grow, kids. You grew up here in Knoxville, right? I did not. No. I, I did not. I was born here, raised in the military, lived in Hawaii, Alaska, Texas, Kentucky, Tennessee, a couple different places. What, what branch? Uh, Dad was in the military, in the Army. In the Army. Yep. Okay. Yep. And then I graduated high school in Texas in 1988, moved here, went to UT, and graduated from UT in 94, and shortly thereafter, I went into law enforcement. So did you go to college for law enforcement? I did not. I went to college to be a math teacher, but I figured... Didn't see that one coming. That was... Uh, <laughs> going into teaching seemed a little dangerous, so I decided I would go into... That was a little bit of a joke there. I was like, uh, so you're <laughs> like, being a teacher sounds dangerous. I'm going to go into law enforcement? No, I just, uh, back then, it, they made it very difficult to get a teaching degree and getting a teaching certificate, and so I didn't want to go through all that extra. And so I decided I'd be the police instead. So I did that for 25 years and did a few different things along the way. Did some acting. I did some professional wrestling. All while you were a All while I was a police, yeah. Worked other jobs. So while you were a police officer, you, you were like a, you were like the one that drove the cars and pulled people over and stuff. I, I did that. I started off uh, working in the jail. I did that for a few years. And then I went to the police academy, went out on the road, and then uh, I was a canine handler. My, okay. my partner, Dosco. And then uh, when he retired, I went into detective work. I did child abuse uh, for three years. And then I did financial crimes for my last three years. I have a lot. So what's it like to work in the jail? Uh, it, was, it was different. Uh, you, you learn how to uh, talk to people from different backgrounds, from different socioeconomic type things. Uh, but... Most of the people, 95% of the people that were in jail, just most of them were good people. They just made mistakes, and was, they were easy to get along with. Was it this jail right here? Yes, right down the road. Right down the road? So it was like county jail? Yes. So people were in and out? It wasn't like that? Yes, I didn't work at a prison. No. No. That sounds miserable. Yeah, it wasn't too bad. It wasn't too bad. How Do long? You, sorry. Oh, I could ask 100 credit. Go, go ahead. How long did you live in Hawaii? Uh, about two and a half years. I was only three years old, so oh. I don't remember much about it. Uh, my was younger brother to... was born there, and then uh, when Dad graduated boot camp, uh, I was two. My older brother was three, and half of his platoon got to, sent to Vietnam, and he was one of the few that got sent somewhere else, and so he got sent to Hawaii. Mm -hmm. So we moved over there. Wait, so were you there when... Oh, I'm about to sound really dumb. Pearl Harbor was in Hawaii. But yes. that was... No, that was the Vietnam War. No. Pearl Harbor. No, no. no Pearl Harbor wasn't. was World War II. It World was War II. See, I knew I was going to The gray say hair threw you off. No, I just don't know so. my... I knew Pearl Harbor happened in Hawaii, but I wasn't <laughs> sure which war it was. Yes. It was a little bit before me. John was in Nam. <laughs> At least... <laughs> It actually happened before my dad was born. <laughs> he left that out. At least I gave it like a precursor. I'm about to. The funny out. part is probably for me too. You could have said that, 
and we're just admiring you for it. I'm like, I'm, wow. Wow. That's, that's amazing. <laughs> I was a tunnel rat and all, so I was, I was <laughs> two. I was two at the time, but I could get we into would, some tight places. We would have never really? done the research. <laughs> they valued your small stature. My small stature was, yeah, I could crawl right through there. I, I think know. it's because we, I, at least for our interview purposes, like we, you could probably put some things on your, and we wouldn't really. Um, yeah. There's probably a lot of things that people do on resumes that they just never get vetted, and you just take someone's word for it, and unless it really comes out later, you just believe it. Because if you, as ignorant as I am about history and those things, unfortunately, I mean, if something like that was on a resume, I'm like, good God, wow, <laughs> yeah. what a, what a this guy, guy. A, oh. you know, or just <laughs> little like when we were looking at resumes for. Milo. Milo, I think. I mean, honestly, yeah. could have looked at, could have put some other things on there. Maybe he padded his resume. Could have put Harvard. Milo, did you like? Pat- what are we gonna do? Call Harvard? <laughs> I was thinking about that too. How do you know? Like somebody could say, like, I got a bachelor's degree. Yeah. Are you gonna call you and can't check? Ch- I, like, I don't know how to check. So yeah. it's like, a, I mean, maybe it's it's public record. I think. Is it? I don't think so because I. I've applied for jobs like being a substitute at B school and they required my um diploma my my uh, college what do you call that transcript oh. yeah degree de- they the required transcript. a copy of it it's my transcripts yeah, yeah. mom mm-hmm. did you have to pee in the bottle to be, go be a substitute I did. fair I, question I did yeah what the drug test Yep, the drug test. And yeah. I never knew that mom never drunk drugs. Well, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Never. It's a very good thing. It's a re- pretty good thing. They also chopped a big chunk of my hair out. Yep, it was Did like they really? mm-hmm. Grace. Yeah, it was like a huge chunk underneath here, and they go and test it. For what? Drugs. Like, literally a chunk. Like, they made you take your ponytail down and... Snap. Yeah. That's a good transition to like what you did. Yeah, right? that's a good transition. Good job, buddy. So, okay, so we are a police officer at the jail, mm-hmm. and then you were a canine detective? So uh, I went out on patrol, and I did that for uh, about eight years. Did you like that? And uh, I did, loved it, loved it. And then they offered me an opportunity to be a canine handler. And so I got my partner, Dosco. He was a three-year-old shepherd okay. when I got him. So when you're a canine handler, they give you the officer. They're like, hey, this is Officer Jane, or obviously not Jane. Yeah. And then do you take them home every day? I do. I do. He lived with me, lived with our family. And, yeah. So he, how does he know when he's working and when he's just a dog? So Dosco was real social. Uh, when he was at home, he played with the kids. He played with the other dog. And then when he was in his cage, uh, or kennel, I should call it, and when he was in the car, he was a different creature. And he was jacked up and ready to go. And if I turned on the lights and siren and picked up the radio, he would start shaking. He was so excited. And we'd get out to track somebody or search a car. He would get so fired up. He knew it's when to turn to it on and off. It's time to work. That's what, so, and then when Dosco retired, what happens then? Is Dosco like your family's yes. dog? He's, he's part of the family at that point. He <laughs> just uh, is retired and stays at home with us until he passed away. Did you get another one? I did not. They offered me another one. I did not want to, I didn't want to do that. I was too old. It was time to do something different. I'm about to say really, really weird. What is a Dosco, off, uh, a Dalmatian officer? I mean, a police off dog officer. Like what kind of dog? Dosco was a German Shepherd. I mean, his like, name was Dosco. Like, what did they do? So he was my German Shepherd, kind of like what Jane is, mm-hmm. and he rode around with me. And he was trained to smell people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he was trained to smell uh, four different narcotics. And What's so, a narcotic? It's like a drug. And so he could smell like if somebody was trying to hide it in their car or in their house, then he could smell it. And he could tell me by scratching at the area that right here's where it's at. He could smell you and know if you were a good person or a bad person. And mm-hmm. if you tried to run away from him, then he could smell on the ground 
where your scent was and he could find you. What he like? Was he like a trained attack dog too? You know how they like make you wear them suits? He was. Uh, he was trained uh, for aggression as well. So that if somebody didn't want to cooperate, then he was trained to take them down. What was a cool situation where you saw that happen? Or did you ever see that happen? Yeah, I did. Um, we actually had a guy run from us, and he crawled up under a house with the crawl space all the way in the very back. And so me and Dosco went in there, and I could see the guy in the very back, and he wasn't going to come out, and he wasn't going to listen to me. He wasn't going to show me his hands or anything. So Dosco ran up there to check on him. Yeah, he was just laying still. Uh, the canines are not trained to bite on passive aggression, only if it's like an active aggressive act. And so he was just laying still. It wouldn't do anything. And Dosco actually started headbutting him, trying to make him move, trying to make him be aggressive so that he could then get him. Get him. And Thank uh, you. he didn't, but uh, yeah, he wouldn't show me his hands. I didn't know if he had a gun, so I... Uh, Gave Dosco the instructions to go and get him, and he did. And then the and then he and I him. we got him, and he and I pulled the guy out and got him in custody. Just you and Dosco by yourself? Mm -hmm. Wow, that's yeah. cool. Yeah. So he was he was my boy. That just happened once, or were there multiple little? Uh, just uh, that was the only time I ever actually had to use him for uh, a takedown. Hmm. Uh, we did, we've tracked several people, but usually when they saw the dog, they would give up. And so when they got, when we got close yeah, to them, I would too. they didn't want to, they didn't want to fight Dosco, so, mm -hmm. or any of the police dogs. Did he ever have a, did he ever fight another dog? Uh, he did not. He was never In an active uh, scenario. dog aggressive. Uh, well, we had a, a standoff one time where we had a guy, an armed suspect, uh, inside the house we were trying to negotiate with him to come out and so dosco and i were on the perimeter and another dog came up and dosco was just ignoring him and then that dog came up and tried to bite me on the ankle and when he did dosco lunged at him and nipped him in his shoulder and he took off running and left us alone but no we, He's a good we would run across good. other dogs mm -hmm. on tracks there and now he never he never cared much for other dogs. So then once Dosco retired, then you decided to move that. That was when you moved into detectives. detectives. Yep, I did uh, was that child a, abuse. Was that a promotion? It was. It was a promotion to uh, go into the to detective ranks. Did you feel like it was a promotion? Yeah, it was a great, uh, great opportunity. I enjoyed working it. I didn't have to work out on the streets and the cold and elements, and I had a more fixed schedule. Okay. which I was getting married at the time, so that was good. To Jennifer? To Jennifer, yes, to Jennifer. And uh, so that was a, it was interesting to, to work the child abuse cases. That's a, so right out of college, I worked for this nonprofit that helped people with special needs find jobs. And at first it was like people with traumatic brain injuries or maybe people with Down syndrome or maybe the, a lot of my clients were deaf because I knew sign language. And then I got a promotion to helping felons and sex offenders find jobs. And it, let me tell you, it was not a promotion. It was not a promotion. So I was curious if it was. No, a, I did see it was a promotion. Um, <clears throat> where your work pays you more money to do something harder. Or expects more expectations out of you. That's a great way to define it. It's a good definition. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's pretty black and white. <laughs> and then what did you think of that? Uh, it was good. Uh, I got to help. I got to help uh, a lot of children. I got to put some some bad people in prison for a, a good period of time. Yeah. So that was, it was also hard to see little victims. Yeah. That were hurting, especially when I had children at home. What's little victims? Kids. Little people. Kids. Children. Dying. Kiddos. Huh? Mm -hmm. Dying. Sometimes. A lot of people do really mean things to kiddos. Like Gypsy Rose. <laughs> Yes, yeah, that's a, that's a good example. In a way. In a way, yes. that's a good example. Sure, Gypsy Rose. But yeah. Gypsy handled it herself. And 
I'm not familiar with Gypsy Rose. So Are what? you kidding me? No. Oh, Dude. the chokehold Gypsy Rose has on the Wells household is. Nope, I'm not a fan of her. Uh huh. Bay's not a fan. Apparently. Let's just say Gypsy was going through something and Gypsy handled it herself. Is this like a show? Oh, well, B can tell you all about it. Yeah, he knows why. Yeah. yeah. What happened definition? to Gypsy Rose, buddy? Gypsy Rose figured out that she wasn't sick, so she killed her mom. There you go. Hmm. Business handled. Business, Business handled. handled, and she went to prison. Code so. F. The, f- the financial crime. And she actually got out a couple weeks ago. A couple weeks ago. Yep, she sure did. She's all, she's ready for another one. <laughs> On the financial crime, that one has always been interesting that you did that to me. And so, like, what's, like, a start to finish, what that looks like? Like, you sit down, first down the job, financial crimes. Like, then something crosses your desk, and then... To where you look at it and you're like, that was a successful case closed. What's something like that look like? That's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, so we would get a variety of cases from bad checks or somebody has hacked into your bank account or somebody has stolen your credit card numbers. Uh, somebody has embezzled um, money from a company. And so we would, I enjoyed that because I did have a, a degree in mathematics. And so I enjoyed numbers. So it was fun to me to go back through and research the bank accounts and track the money and see where it went and how this could have happened. And then finding the people and helping people get their money back and punishing the people that stole. Mm -hmm. I figure we all work hard for our money. Everybody else should too. And uh, I don't deal well with thieves. So it was fun to, fun to do that. A lot more fun than child abuse cases. Yeah. Yeah. That would be for sure. This brings me to the other case that had a chokehold on me. <laughs> Are you doing some AM, ASMR over there? Is the ASMR. Anna Delvey case because she, do you know who Anna Delvey is? I do not. John, do you live under a rock? <laughs> Seriously? Milo, you know who Anna Delvey is, right? No idea. Well, Logan, do you know who Anna Delvey is? The making Anna, the like German heiress who? that like took all Who's that money. Who's Anna Delvey? Anna Delvey. No. All right, well. B. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> Milo, but it's pretty keep it in check. No, don't do that either. You just talk into the microphone. Fine. Do you have any questions for John? Yes. Okay, go for it. How was professional wrestling? Mm. That was one of the funnest jobs I ever did. Where was this in the timeline? Were you a police officer when you did this? I was. Okay. Um... And I was uh, working with a guy that uh, did uh, local professional wrestling. And he asked me to, he knew I was a fan of that growing up. And he asked me to come out to one of his matches and dress up as a bad guy and interfere with the match. Like I would, uh, he would throw his, the good guy out and I would kick him and stomp him and hit him with my stick and then pick him up and throw him back in the ring where the referee wasn't looking. And so that was uh, that was outstanding. And then uh, I helped him with a couple of matches. And then they decided they were going to put me in some of my single matches. So I, I got to do some tag team matches with him. Got to do some single matches with him. And uh, sometimes I would be the bad guy. And sometimes I would change clothes and be the the good guy. What was your favorite? My the favorite. The good guy or the bad guy? Uh, probably being the the bad guy. Just because you got more interaction with the fans, and I was standing out walking around, and I got to be, mean. I don't know, mean. Yeah. What was your wrestling name? So my uh, good guy name was Johnny Swindler from Mainerville, Tennessee, and I wore uh, overalls with no shirt and combat boots. <laughs> and uh, love to see that. Like an yeah. Okie from Muskogee. Okie from Muskogee, yes. Okay. Uh, my was that bad, your character, just like yeah. Oki? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, just an old country boy come down out of the sticks to <laughs> wrestle. Bad guy name? Rassle. My What's bad guy bad? name. So I never really had an official bad guy name because I was just always the guy outside interfering with everything. But um, mm. a friend of mine was at a one of our matches and he started yelling out that I was the outhouse boy. 
It's an and outhouse so, boy. So an outhouse is an old bathroom from many, many decades ago where people didn't have indoor plumbing and you would cut a hole in the ground and build a stall around it and you would go outside and use the bathroom. And, kind of like a porta potty. Yeah. Oh. So they were making fun of me and so from that point forward, whenever I would show up, uh, people would holler at me, the outhouse boy. So I guess that was kind of my name when I was a bad guy. What did you wear when you were a bad guy? So when I was a bad guy, I wore black pants. I wore a long sleeve black shirt, and then I wore a black mask with a star on the face. Like Kiss? You sound like a yeah. Kiss person. Yeah. No way. I yeah. heard of that boxer. Mm -hmm. he, he's just a different guy. He's a, he's a different guy now? Remember at WWE, that guy had like a cape and a shirt and long pants, and he also had that mask with a star on it. Mm, you're right. The one that buried that guy? That one? Oh, that buried, um, yeah. The one we watched WWE with, um, Mayor Kane. Mm hmm And anyways, it was one where he was like, bar he bar Mayor Kane buried that guy. The other president, and he died, right? Oh, no, nobody dies. That was my next question. So it's all, like, it's not actual wrestling. Is it? No, it's all scripted uh, for the most part. And then, so you kind of plan the match in the back, kind like of go through dance. everything. Yeah. And then when you're in the, in the ring, uh, a lot of times you would lock up with somebody so that you're real close to them and you can kind of tell them what you're getting ready to do. But you know how it's going to end before you, uh, before you go out there and then you just kind of do different things and uh, dance around. Yeah. Uh, for 10 or 15 minutes, however long, and then uh, you'll say, okay, it's time to time to take it home. And then you go into your finishing, your scripted finishing. Now, it, I say that, but uh, it does hurt Oh, for times. sure. Uh, I did break some ribs. In a, in people, a like, throw matches. you over your shoulder and yeah. slam you on the ground. Yep. Um, okay, so the only thing I've ever been to like that is when we went, went to go see Barrett and his brother at this like local same thing the the local thing mm -hmm. and people get wild like the spectator people get wild like they yell at them yeah is yeah. it do you have any wild stories from that I actually had a uh, a lady that was probably in her seventies <laughs> and I was the bad guy and I just happened to turn around in time. Because uh, she had a high heel shoe on. Stop. And she swung it at my head. Okay. And I was able to turn around and see it just in time to duck as she swung it. She cussed me like a sailor. I mean, she was vicious. Yeah. yeah. The yeah. fans are the vicious. First, like, the first wrestling match I went to, this guy fell off. And my best friend was, like, real close to him. And he was like, are you okay, Mr. Terry? Because that was his, like... He it was the other guy's name, but he was like, and he and the, and then the other guy got real ma mad at him. So I so I jumped. I grabbed Cooper, ran over to the bleachers, and sit down with him. And he was like, "Why did you just do that, Brantley?" And I was like, "I saved you." Right. <laughs> that You're was, welcome. <laughs> that was at the same event that we watched Barrett, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was a good event. I I wonder if everywhere good. in the world has like. Um, s standard. What do you what do you call that? Semi pro? Would you call that semi pro wrestling events? Yeah, I mean it's professional wrestling entertainment. I mean, you, whatever you want to call it, it's because like going pro obviously wasn't your goal. Like you're the you were there just to have some fun. Yeah, I did. But I'm sure some of those people were like trying to get in WWE, and, and some of them uh, went to one match and. There was a, a couple of guest wrestlers there, and one of them was Bob Armstrong that I grew up as a kid, loving watching him on TV. He yeah. was big time, and I walked in, and he's sitting there. He was just had come in as a guest for the show. Um, That's wild. And Dirty White Boy was in there one time, and it was just uh, it Did was you get cool. to wrestle them? Uh, actually, I was the one of the guys on the one of the times I was the bad guy on the outside. Uh, Dirty White Boy was the other was the good guy, and so he got thrown out of the ring, and I got to stomp on him and punch him in the ribs and hit him with my 
stick and then throw him back into the ring. What was the highlight of that life experience? And somebody's like, what's your favorite part? What, like, what was your favorite thing? Uh, you know, just as a kid growing up and watching these guys on TV and seeing what they would do. And you know, we would go outside after a Saturday afternoon of watching wrestling. We would go out outside and we would wrestle each other and we had nicknames for each other. So I guess as a getting to do it, actually in a ring with people watching you and cheering for you or cheering against you uh that was that, that was, it was a lot of fun it you, was it was well worth it do you feed off the energy oh yeah oh, oh yeah okay. yeah yeah it was, it was it was super cool when people are when you're the good guy and people are chanting your name and you're walking around outside and they're patting you on the back it's yeah. just it's pretty cool do they ask for your autographs I never had that. Never I never had. had that. But I just did it for about a year, and uh, I decided that breaking ribs really wasn't worth right. twenty dollars a match. Because what do you do to heal a broken rib? You just suck it up for a month or two, and Ooh. you can't wrap it up. You can't do anything. You just take shallow breaths for the next month. What shallow breath? Shallow, like <laughs> you don't breathe real heavy. Then you get a lung infection. Yeah. Call it a day. Because it hurts. Yeah. Do you have any other questions for John about being a wrestler? Hmm. Did people like cheer against you, like that that weren't boxing, like that weren't wrestling, but they came into the ring and tried to hurt you because they didn't like you? No, I never had anybody try to uh, attack me from the audience, but there was always security guards there to keep people, and there was bars to what? keep them from coming after me. Like, but what about that lady? Was she a boxer? No, no, she was just <laughs> she crazy. Old she woman. was just a a, a disgruntled uh, person that wanted the good guy to win and didn't like me kicking him. John actually went on to date her after that for a little while. <laughs> so she turned out to be really sweet. <laughs> turned out to be quite the firecracker. <laughs> Wait, were you married to Jennifer when all this happened? I was not. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> no. That was my no, next was question because Jennifer's a firecracker. I'd be in, yeah. interested to no, see what she. <laughs> she is definitely a, a firecracker to say the least. But. Okay. My ne- so you were also on TV? I did. I did some acting on different uh, shows. What show? Um, I, I don't know anything about any of this. Uh, so, like, uh, there was um, a production company here in Knoxville. That would do like HGTV? murder reenactments similar. They were on DIY, and I can't remember the name of them now, but they would do uh, different reenactments from cases around the around the country. There was a Homicide Hunter. I was on that one a couple of times. Uh, snapped Killer Couples. I was on that one a couple of times. Like, murder Comes the, to Town. Were you the police officer? I was the police officer. Were yeah. you really? Mm-hmm. So yeah. I, I know that they did this, and they would like, because I remember we used to live in like old North Knoxville and they film in those houses a lot. And one time we were walking in the park and there was like all this caution tape around this one house. There was like, well now I know it was like a dummy body and they like had it covered up with this white sheet or whatever. And I was like, there's like, this is a crime scene. Like right here, they just left the body out there for like, we're walking be in a stroller or whatever, but it was one of those. Mm -hmm. It had to have been one of those. Yeah. Yeah. We were doing a lot of different locations. Uh, There's actually, uh, a friend of uh, Logan's dad, uh, he's got a big farm in East Knox County off Rutledge Pike, and we've been out to his house multiple times to film out in his fields. Was that the... Dosca was on. Nicely, yeah. Oh, yeah. Dosca was on there hmm. one time. Really? Yeah. Wait, so how many did you do? Oh, I, I don't know. I did it for about three or four years. They had so, ours just call John? Call I John. Like, I feel like we could look this up and find it, right? Yeah, what do you search? Snapped? What oh, you're episode? You're not going to verify that, are you? Oh, I'm going to be. <laughs> what episode of Snapped were you? Oh, on? I, don't, I don't know. I don't remember the the names. That's been a long time ago that I did that, so I, I couldn't it's tell you the exact a names. Murdering movie. It's a murdering show. It's about people who just snap and then they just die. No, they usually kill somebody else and, you and know, then die. And then die. Yeah. It's just a lot of death. Were you the ones that died, John? No, no, I never had to play a dead guy. But did you kill people? No, no, I never had to act like I was killing anybody. You, you were just the guys that made people 
pay the crime. Yeah, yeah. he's a police officer, so he'd go arrest him, just like in real life. Mm-hmm. Wait, was it while you were a police officer? I was. Yeah. So did they just call the local police department and was like... So there was a, an officer that worked with us that was the point of contact. And so they would call him, hey, I need three officers, I need two detectives, I need a canine handler. And then he had a list of us that were interested and he would call us, hey, can you bring Dosco over here? They need to do this. And, mm-hmm. and so... Yeah, Dosco got on TV one time. I'm really, pretty cool. I'm listening to you. I don't know why I'm yawning. I'm listening. Like oh, I'm, you're okay. Jennifer yawns all the time when I'm in the middle of a conversation, so I'm, I'm used li- to it. I'm intrigued. I am. I don't know why I'm yawning. <laughs> like this whole time, I'm just like, and then what happened? How are you tired? Um. There's this local company, Red Arrow Production, that used to email Tim because they would need, like, a contractor to come and do those little shorts that HGTV puts up places. So there's a couple times that she'd email me, and she'd be like, can you take a picture of Tim's hands? <laughs> that was both times. She just needed pictures of his hands. He didn't get... He got picked one time, but all the other times he didn't get picked. <laughs> <laughs> so he was like a hand model yeah. on Seinfeld. Model. Yeah, because yeah. they like they would have an actor like act the stuff, but then when it was time to like do the DIY thing, like one time it was building the one time he got picked, it was like for Yellowwood, and he um, had to build a pergola or something. And so the actor would do like the acting, and then they would ha- have Tim, and they would do all the close ups of him like actually swinging a hammer and like actually cutting mm-hmm. and stuff. It's more detailed and everything, maybe. Yeah. I guess I'm like doing the actual building, and then the actor would be like, hmm. "Like, look at Taking this the credit. thing I built." <laughs> That's interesting. What else? What else what do we? Need? Daddy build. Oh, like a pergola or something. What's a pergola? Like a house? Mm, like a cover, kind of. With no roof. <laughs> yeah. The story of how you transition here is pretty good, though. It's pretty, <coughs> pretty funny. Yeah. So. Uh, how I wound up here, uh, Jennifer and I were actually out at a home show. Yeah, I remember. And uh, walking through, and we had talked about a fence for uh, a couple of years. And I said, well, there's a, a a booth there with Tim's fencing. And I it, see their signs everywhere. It was the one at the Expo Center, It right? was at the Expo yeah. Center and right. walked over. And Jennifer. Logan and Jamie were there. No. And so... I'm ninety percent sure. I feel pretty confident that that's who it was. <laughs> oh, I remember Jennifer. No. Hmm? Okay, maybe I'm wrong. Now we've been to a couple John, of times since then. Alter your story because <laughs> you're wrong. Okay. Because so. you're wrong. I remember Jennifer. Okay. Uh, anyway, me and Jennifer walked up and talked to you and Jamie <laughs> and Logan and uh, uh, told Jamie kind of what we was looking for, and he came out and walked around and priced everything up and uh, just cutting up he was just constantly cutting up with jennifer and making fun of me the first time i met the guy when he came to our house and uh, it was just uh, super cool Uh, and then so we decided okay we're not even going to call anybody else i like these guys we're gonna we're gonna go with these guys and Jamie called me three or four times during the process. Hey, here's what we're going to do. How's everything going? Everything looked good for you. Followed up with me constantly. And then he calls me one day and says, you ever think about retiring? I said, I think about it every day. I just got need to find a job. He said, well, I got a job for you. Uh, I need you to call Tim Wells, and here's the, here's the phone number. Yeah. And I called, and... Spoke to you, actually. Yeah, it was me. And uh, said, hey, John Huff. Uh, and you said, ah, we're not really thinking about hiring anybody right now, so we'll just yeah. call you in a uh, you know, couple years. <laughs> no, I didn't say that. <laughs> couple years. You I said, don't I'll, we're going to talk about it this weekend. We'll call you on Monday. Yeah. And so you called me back on Monday and said, can you come in for an interview? And sat down with you and Tim and Logan and... Uh, you what guys were like, hey, you guys want to try it? You guys, you think you're interested? And I said, yep, yeah, I'm interested. When do I sign up? And so I come out and I did a ride along with Logan. And, a ride along? Uh, he showed me a couple of things and showed me how you make uh, sales and how you do this and do that. And so the funny part behind the scenes was 
it's just obviously dad's a better better at picking talent than I was because I I was very against it because <laughs> because I was like, well, how old is he? And he's like, well, <laughs> you know, he's older. He's probably about my age. And I was like, well, strike one because that's that's not what we want to do. And then didn't even want to didn't even want to sit down. And he's like, he's like, you just got. I'm telling you, you got to meet the guy. You know, whatever. And and um, so this is all new to me. I'm and not, so I'm we, not heard whatever I've oh, told I you that you have never <laughs> yes, told me I have. that I was too old for the job. But I only <laughs> I'd never met you, so I, it's not a, it's not offensive. <laughs> it's not offensive. Yeah, we can cut it out, I guess. But. No, I like that. It's funny. <laughs> and and um, and Dad was trying to convince me because I'm like, well, we're just going for like a different different vibe or whatever long term, I guess, and. And uh, could not have been a better, better fit long term. Cause then I then we met you and I'm like, oh my goodness, like this, yeah, it would work. Then we did our ride along, and then I was like, wow, this is perfect. And then you started, you started drawing and making sales and talking to people mm-hmm. and having good installs, and it was the best thing we ever did. So my dad was absolutely right about that. But yeah, I remember if being- they would have listened to me. Oh, yeah. I remember well, the, being nervous. When I showed up for the interview, yeah. I come walking in, and there was three dozen donuts sitting over there. And I said, well, what's this about? I said, y'all, y'all trying yeah. to lure in the cop by having yeah. donuts? <laughs> yeah. And I thought it was going to be donuts here every day. And then I got hired, and there wasn't. And I thought maybe it was just a, a trick to get me interested. But Just about every day there's <laughs> but it donuts did. here. But it did work. It did <laughs> work. <laughs> I remember being nervous about bringing bringing him on too because like mm-hmm. we knew you outside of Tim's fencing and your dad outside of Tim's fencing, but like you were our first like, cold, like I don't, I don't want to say cold hire, but like yeah, we didn't no. know you outside of Tim's fencing. Like you were just a newbie, a newbie, and I was like I was nervous about that. Mm-hmm. I'm like we don't know anything about him. Yeah. Wait, did you know Logan when you hired him? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Logan what, actually told me that. I said I was the first one you guys hired outside of first one. family connections. Yeah. For that type of job. Yeah. yeah. Not like a well, yeah. installer, but yeah. 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 So, so consider yourself lucky. You know, that's pretty much. that's a so pretty big I'm thing. Self blessed. So, so blessed. <laughs> <laughs> It's a fun environment to work in. To and that's what I started drinking. <laughs> I have added alcohol to my repertoire since then. Because being a detective for a child who used to neglect didn't do well, it. But working at Tim Svensson, should we well, send you over the edge? Ugh. Well, that's okay. What else? What else do I need to know? So now you're married to Je- you. You're married to Jennifer. I am uh, married to Jennifer. Okay. Uh, we've been married about eight and a half years. We have five children between us. Yeah. Uh, ranging from Carly will be 19 this month <coughs> to 27. And you um, have your sons in the military now. Uh, My oldest boy lives in Nashville, and uh, he actually works for an insurance company. My younger son is a lieutenant in the Marine Corps. Uh-huh. Very proud of him. Uh, our daughter, she works for a marketing firm, and she lives in Powell. And then our younger two are freshmen and sophomore at UT. And they work at Texas Roadhouse, go in there and ask for Sierra. Perfect. Or Longhorn out at West Elm Mall, go in there and ask for Carly. Little plug. Little Perfect. plug. Little plug Perfect. in there. Tip them well. Perfect. <laughs> they will tell me if you don't. <laughs> <laughs> Logan came in and stiffed me. Yeah. <laughs> what? No, I, I I don't work at Texas Roadhouse, but could you imagine Carly being like, oh, Logan I was thinking, came in. I was thinking, when were you a waitress? That's not... <laughs> but, lo- yeah. Never mind, that confused me. Hey, Mom. What? You going to tell me you're hungry? Yeah. Okay. You want to go get a snack? I think we're about done. Well, that's Johnny. Yeah. That's Johnny you and wait? a shell. Yeah. And a shell. Just waiting on... Been an honor to have you. Final retirement. It's been an honor Good to grief. Yeah. Every... <laughs> He'll be like, like Logan said, I'm old. <laughs> He's pointed that out no. a couple times. How many more years until final retirement? Seven. You don't need glasses right? to see. I, I hope my our goal is for Jennifer and I. Our goal is to retire in about eight to ten years and so, move to the beach. And move to. The, I was like, so then what's the goal? Move yeah, to the beach. Move to the beach. Yeah. Hmm. And yeah. Li- which beach? 
Orange Beach, Alabama. Ooh, okay. Yeah. That's our goal. And then just live your days tanning on the beach. Just tanning, hanging out with Waylon and Hank. Oh, yeah, this yeah. is Waylon's daddy for everybody who watched the podcast last week. Yeah, Waylon was the one misbehaving and biting you on the hands and your shirt and everything. <laughs> no, he's cute. We're hoping to have If you haven't seen it, he's a puppy. So a puppy. don't don't he's think we had a little, little kid in here for those contexts. He's very cute. <laughs> yeah, what did, we, what did we just talk to Jennifer about? What we're we going to get his baby. Yeah, yeah. we're going to get Waylon's baby in a year. We're going to be the first one. We're going to run here, get his baby, run home, Snuggle and snuggle and snuggle and snuggle with him. That's our plan. You're just gonna snatch Waylon's baby from him. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab him and hug him. Okay. He's gonna be one pound, right? Yeah, probably. Like, how much does Waylon weigh now? So he is now up to a robust four pounds. Wow, he's huge. Yeah, Giant. he's a porker. Bit of a porker. <laughs> like a porker. Like a chub, like chub. chubby, chubby little dog. Wait, how big is he this time? Is oh. he like alone? No. Well, did he grow? No, he's not really any taller. His legs he's are just, like this big. Yeah, his legs are about two and a half inches. How long is he? No, I don't know. Why? He doubled ten, in size. Ten inches. He's probably about this when he stretches out. He's probably about eight inches and ten inches long. And Them little two and a half inch legs are going to have to work. About five inches hard. tall. How big is he going to get? I think he's going to probably peak at about nine or ten pounds. Ooh. He's going to double in size. Mm-hmm. Good dog. The size. He's going to have a play date with Logan's dog. Logan's yeah, got a did mini you know Dotson. Logan has a mini Dotson mm-hmm. too? His name is Jack. Yeah. yeah. Are you going to put him in the wiener dog race on the ice? What? I'd How do like you to. know about the wiener dog race on the ice? Stephanie told me. Oh. How did does Stephanie it. know about the wiener dog race on the ice? He did it one year and chickened out. He wouldn't run. Hmm. Is Waylon going to be in the wiener dog race on the ice? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. We'd probably be up for that. He's probably too small this year because I think it's in a couple weeks. Yeah, it's coming up real soon. I was protective dad on him. If I put him on the ice and one of these dogs come over and try to get him, I'm booting one of these things in front of God and everybody in the stadium. (laughs) I got no problem doing it. I was so ready because they were already kind of fighting back and forth. And Jack's very just chill. Like if they come up and they're trying to get up in his grill, it's going to look like a football just going right into the ice. But it was but all good. That's what I think Tim's going to be like, because right now Tim is a hard no, right, about the puppy, hard no. But now, and then when you get the puppy, he's going to be a hard yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's going to be like carrying that baby around everywhere like mm-hmm. John mm-hmm. does. That's me. Carrying yeah. the baby <laughs> everywhere. Except that to work. Yeah, we got we got. And then Jennifer scared. walks in and Brantley's like, where's the puppy? Yeah. you said the puppy was a j- <laughs> well, she had to go get her hair done. So. so uh, she didn't bring the puppy? No. No. Mommy, mm-hmm. can I take my watch off? Yeah, we can be. If I could say this, Jennifer, your hair looks beautiful. <laughs> it's beautiful. Okay. Make sure that's in there. Just want to make sure <laughs> I get it. that plug in there. Sure Don't I... edit that out. <laughs> we'll, ed- <laughs> we'll actually <laughs> edit it in eight times yeah. <laughs> throughout the podcast. <laughs> Just drop it Every in there. 10 minutes. We should get a picture of her. So for the video one, it's just like, bing, Jennifer. Bing, Jennifer. Well, that's all the questions he I had. I told the story I'm... that um, one day he came home and she was crying. And she was like, what are you, you talking didn't about? notice my oh. hair. Jennifer. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Girls are sensitive. Yeah, I told you that. Mm-hmm. Very. Especially if I have to do their looks. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Girls are sensitive. You just always got to tell them that they're pretty. Mm, always compliment their hair. Always compliment them. Say that they're pretty. What if they aren't? What? Well, you certainly don't say you're <laughs> Fair not point. pretty. <laughs> you, may, you, maybe just, you maybe just don't say anything, you know? You maybe. Cert- huh? Maybe don't. Oh, okay. You want to close us out? Say thank you, John, for coming. Thank you, John, for coming. Oh, was, oh. Woo. Enjoyed it. <laughs>
<laughs> had a good time. Unless there's a, the did questions. I miss anything? Did I miss yeah, I think anything? you covered it pretty well. Yeah. yeah I think everything was pretty well covered. Uh, all my life experiences. I thought you were going to be a little bit more zesty, but everybody comes in here and their mood just like mellows out. You know? Is it the headphones? Something about it. Even Brantley mellows out. We'll just, I don't know how to fix that. Yeah. Everybody comes in here and they're just like, so. Anyway. Alcohol. Hi, everybody. Maybe a little less. That's uh, a good fixer. I mean, I'm down with the mouth. Okay, now let's go. Let's get it rolling. Get it rolling. Oh, good. You did great, Sean. Well, thank you, bud. How long was it?